After we enter the kingdom of God through faith, we must develop a consistent lifestyle with governing and if we do this, if we do not do this, we will soon forget God has cleansed us from sin and return to old sinful lifestyle. Peter says, if we go on spiritual maturity, we, our entrance to the kingdom will be assured. And we, when we take up residency in the kingdom of God, we must learn the patterns and principles of kingdom living. It is similar to learning the lifestyle of a new country to which we have immigrated. And here is the parallel illustration of lifestyle. So entering a country, Canada, and entering God's kingdom. So we need a visa to enter Canada. In God's kingdom, our visa is being born again. In John 3, chapter 3, verse one to, verses 1 to 8, it, it was repeated three times that we must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. To prepare for the move, we need to research about the country. We need to know the law, lifestyle, weather, on. In God's kingdom, we need to study God's word to know our way around the kingdom, around the God's kingdom. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says, we need to meditate the word day and night. And after landing, we need to unload our baggages and arrange it to suit our new life in Canada. In God's kingdom, we need to unload our baggages of our own past and start a fresh new life as a genuine believer of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new cre creation. All things has gone, and new has come. We need to find a job to sustain our needs. In God's kingdom, we need to involve in ministry or God's work according to our gifts and talents to sustain our growth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, it says, for, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. In Matthew 9, chapter 9, verse 37, it says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We need to pay our taxes in Canada, rentals, utilities, support our country, to support our country's economy. In God's kingdom, we need to give our tithes to support, to support God's work. In Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 37, it says, To bring the tithes to our land to the Levites, for the Levites should receive the tithes. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Yes, in tithes and offering. In, ver in chapter 10, it says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. And the Lord even asked to challenge him. He said, Try me now in this, if I will not open for you that the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that will not be room enough to receive it. We need to be a law-abiding citizen of the country, obeying the, the law of the country. And we need to be obedient to God's word as citizen, sense of his kingdom. Jesus said to him in Matthew, 27 we need, said Jesus said to him you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and this is the first and great commandment and the second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself I 
As citizens, we have the privilege to the benefits of the land. And as God's children, or citizen, we have the privilege to claim His promises, promises and blessings. In John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, But as many as receive Him, to them, to them He gave the right to become a children of God, to those who believe in His name. We are free to exercise our rights here in Canada. In God's kingdom, we are indeed free from the bandage of sins and enjoy the gift of our salvation. Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 2, it says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made, made me free from the law of sin and death. In John 8, 36, it says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And lastly, when we die, we will be buried in the land or burned to ashes and be put in, in an urn, leaving all our possessions behind here on earth. In God's kingdom, when we die, we are assured of eternal life forever with our Creator God and Savior Jesus Christ. In John chapter 3, verse 16, is the Lord, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we have plus a bonus of a reward or crown according to the treasures we invested while we were on earth. In Luke chapter 6, verse 23, it says, Rejoice and live for joy. For indeed your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. And we have different kinds of crowns for Christian. Crown for joy, righteousness, life, glory, and imperishable. So these are the lifestyles in the kingdom of God. And since we know the lifestyle, we now no need to know the attitude to have in the kingdom of God. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, verses 5 to 11 says, But also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, self-control, perseverance, perseverance, perseverance to godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these, lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God for reading of his word. Let us pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, Lord, that you give us an instruction, an attitude, in the kingdom Lord we pray that you give us the wisdom and understanding of your word and Lord we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us as you promised that two or three gathered in your name share in the midst of us Lord God Lord we thank you and we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus name we pray Amen so the Lord's message for today is about growing with God. Apostle Peter was talking about the principles of God in chapter 1 verses 5 to 9. It is important for us to know, to develop these principles with diligence. In verse 5 it says, add. This is the same word, word rendered supplied in verse 11. 
as we add these qualities to our faith, God will add us to us an abundant entrance into everlasting kingdom. So the code of conduct listed in verses 5 to 7 are faith, marks the beginning of Christian life. It says in Hebrew chapter 11 verse 6, but without faith is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and he that he is a rewarder of those diligently seek him. The Bible says through genuine faith God grants eternal life to a spiritually dead person. Virtue or Christian virtue is the same word used in reference in verse 3 in reference to Christ's character. We cannot produce virtue ourselves, but we can choose to obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Knowledge or practical wisdom is obtained by dedicating ourselves, dedicating ourselves to learning God's truth in the scripture and putting that truth into action. So let us not be just a listener of the word, but be a doer of the word. Self-control means mastering one's emotion rather than being controlled by, by them. Perseverance. A person who exercises self will not easily succumb to discouragement or temptation to quit. Viewing all circumstances as coming from the hand of a loving father who is in control of all things is the secret of perseverance. Godliness. Peter uses the word to speak of the need for Christians to be continually aware of God's presence. Knowing that all our life is in his hands should influence every aspect of our life and not for ourselves. Brotherly kindness is so closely linked with godliness that in 1 John 20 says, If someone loves God, says, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. As Jesus taught in John chapter 15 verses 12 to 7 involves serving one another with one another and praying for one another. Love or aga, agape kind of love which in the one love but in the one who loves. God loves because he is love. We are to love because we are from God. Such love reaches beyond the Christian community Christian community to anyone, anywhere, making that person's highest good, even at a cost to ourselves. So the Christian life demands diligence in pursuing moral excellence, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and selfless love. I want to read a story it's a story entitled, Glenda's Long Swim, in the Incredible Series. Glenda and Robert Lennon were four miles off the coast of, Flo of Florida, fishing alone from their yacht. Glenda decided to take a swim and soon found the current had carried her too far, too far out from the boat. Her husband, hearing her cries, Without thinking, he dove in and swam to her. But then realized there were there were both. He was, but not she. They made a plan. He would swim against the tide to keep the boat in view until the tide ceased and he could reach the boat. 
she should she should save her strength and just float with the tide and would come and get her he he fought the tide the tide for six hours and just as the boat was about to disappear in the horizon the tide turned and his stroke carried him to the boat exhausted the sun had set his searching was futile he could not find his wife the next day on the last effort of search the search party found his wife 20 miles out and still alive it was an incredible story but in our Christian walk we need to swim hard and don't float so what illustrates is this Christian who just float never stay in the same place Christian who disobey verses 5 to 7 and do not apply themselves with diligence to bear fruit great peril we must strive the tide of temptation is so strong so the effort towards virtue knowledge self-control godliness brotherly kindness and love is not a dispensable icing to on the cake of faith if robert had not swam with all his might the yacht would have gone out of sight and he and his wife would have drawn so as christ we strive hard to finish the race god's power has given to us by faith is that we are now ma making every effort as verse 5 says to advance in the qualities of Christ. qualities 5 to 7 marks a healthy christian and assures the productivity productivity product, productivity of in our lives sorry and the value of these principles they will make you abound in spiritually and fruitful in the knowledge of Christ that what was happened in the person who quits swimming and is not pressing forward in Christ's qualities the problem with the person who does not strive toward all the fruit of faith is that he is blind in two directions blindness to the past and future work that power and leave us in limp in water in the water drifting toward destruction the lack of fruit, fr fruitfulness in believers life may cause by two factors no spiritual vision a short-sighted person is one who looks only at early and material values what is close as the hand and does not see the eternal spiritual realities concerned only with this present life such a person becomes blind to the things of god no spiritual memory forgetting the wonderful sense of cleansing that comes from turning oneself in burston says therefore brethren be even more diligent to make your call and election sure for if you do these things you will never stumble peter archie's reader to confirm the call and election not memory it does not seem like a person could forget it if it's his sins had been washed away by the atoning death of christ but the whole matter could escape his notice if he we, he were not urged to make sure about it we cannot sure of call and election if we had not purged from our former sin on the other hand if this are going to change more and more into his likeness and this is called sanctification and it is the intended result 
of salvation for every man and woman. And God's goal is that Christ would be formed in his sons and daughters. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 19 it says, My little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in And this process is not automatic. But of one writer has called the, a long and how we do we participate in this process of sanctification first is by learning God's Word the Bible is the primary way that Christian learn how to obey God we read it to learn from it and to be supernaturally naturally changed by it because it is a living book with the power to change us. By changing our lifestyle from worldly lifestyle into a Christian lifestyle. So it is very important relationship with Jesus Christ. Growth in our relationship, talking to God continually, and reading His Word, the Bible, daily. It also comes through meeting with other Christians for fellowship, worship, encouragement, accountability, Bible and be involved in God's ministry. By totally surrendering, surrendering to Him, in your time alone with God, ask Him to show, to show you any area of your life in which you are not obedient to his word if there are areas with which you struggle that seem to be routinely get the better of you seek the counsel of an older and wiser Christian who may be able to walk with you in your struggle and hold you accountable by the Holy Spirit so this is a practice that grows easier with time. But you can trust and must begin to know and respond to the one that Jesus called the Comforter and whom he sent to walk beside us. By trusting the Holy Spirit is the same way that you by faith trusted in Christ for your salvation. Learn to trust in the Holy Spirit for the power to obey God on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And Paul explains in Romans 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 30, that those elect should be predestined to be Christ-likeness. He also called, and whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. None of God's sheep will be ever lost. They are eternally secure. But from our side, the most important question of life is, am I among the elect who God predestines to be like Christ and then calls and justifies and glorifies forever? And if we are, God wants us to know that we are. He wants us to have a joyful assurance for out of that assurance flows tremendous power for sacrificial service that gives him glory. Our church mission is we exist as a life-giving church to share the love of Jesus, learn to influence people, live an orderly life through discipleship, and send them to the mission field. We have an equipped pastor and elders of the church who is willing to help us to, to grow our faith in, Christ, in the Lord. And we want to help you in this process. Jayus Church, we offered journey classes and everyone, it is open to everyone. 
We have life groups. We have life groups here in Suri and life groups in Chilliwack. We have a prayer meeting. Prayer meeting every Friday in Chilliwack and we have a, a prayer meeting here, a corporate prayer meeting here every first Saturday of the month here in Suri. And we also have the church ministry. And God's ministry is always hiring. There's no recession. So if you want unlimited income, you need to join church ministry and God will bless you. So ministry hiring, we need people for praise and worship ministry, media ministry, GIS ministry, food ministry, children, and many more. So in verse 11 says, Entrance abundantly, Peter distinguishes between a just barely made, made it entrance into eternal kingdom and a rich, richly abundant one. In Revelation 20 to 12, it says, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So the scripture indicates and faithful, faithful living here will be rewarded by greater privileges and rewards in glory. And the question is, if you meet the Lord today, what do you want to hear from Him? My good and faithful servant. So we're aiming for that recognition from the Lord. So we, we must swim hard for His glory 